Guten Tag, A-Push. We have a new video today. It's The Bee's Knees by the Big Cheese himself, Mr. Linegar. Let's make history today as we jaw over Unit 4, Day 2. But first, let's do our daily punishment. My wife tried to apply at the post office, but they wouldn't let her. They said only males work here. <laughs> Two puns in one! Key terms for today, popular sovereignty, free soil party, the 49ers, Harriet Tubman, the Underground Railroad, William Seward, Fire Eaters, Millard Fillmore, The Compromise of 1850, Doughface, Franklin Pierce, The Walker Expedition, The Clayton Bulwer Treaty, Matthew Perry, da -na 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 -na. The Ostend Manifesto, The Gadsden Purchase, Stephen Douglas, the Kansas-Nebraska Act, barn burner Democrats, and the Republican Party. We're going to have a new party. This is going to take us from 1849 to 1854 about. We're going to go over anti-slavery politics, the Compromise of 1850 and its results, foreign policy under Pierce, and the Kansas-Nebraska Act and its results, and the birth of the Republican Party. So let's talk about popular sovereignty. Popular sovereignty was an idea uh, that has to do with slavery. It was originally coined by Northern Senator Lewis Cass. It says that the territory, the people in the territories should be able to vote on whether they want to have slavery or not. So popular sovereignty obviously uh, ignores the Missouri Compromise because the Missouri Compromise said there's no slavery north of 3630. Popular sovereignty says let the people in the territories decide whether to have slavery or not. We are going to have another third party being formed around this time. This is called the Free Soil Party. This was formed around the time of the Wilmot Provisio. They're going to be against slavery. They wanted uh, federal aid for internal improvements. They wanted cheap land, free soil, free speech, free labor, and free men. They will be a third party. Eventually, a lot of them will merge into the Republican Party in the next couple of years. And this will foreshadow the Republican Party. Here's a picture of some free soil people. In the election of 1844, the Whigs are going to, 1848, the Whigs are going to nominate uh, the military general, the hero, Zachary Taylor. The Democrats will nominate Lewis Cass. Uh, it seems like the Whigs could only win when they nominate generals. The Free Soil Party will nominate Martin Van Buren, who's the former president. He's going to join a third party. And Zachary Taylor is going to win this election. During this time, gold will be discovered in California in 1848. This is going to lead to a massive flock of people moving to Northern California to try to find gold to get rich quick. They're called 49ers. There's going to be economic growth. In order for a territory to become a state, it needs to have a, a certain amount of people. So with the 49ers coming to California, California is going to propose to become a state. They do not want slavery. So this is going to cause a new controversy. So we're going to have some sectional differences between the North and the South. The South has the presidency. They have the majority of the cabinet and the majority of the Supreme Court. They are the minority in the, the House of Representatives because there's more people in the North than the South. The slave states are, are equal to the free states, so they are equal in the Senate and in the House. The South is worried. In 1850, there's 15 free states and 15 slave states. New Mexico and Utah are leaning towards free states. California wants to be a free state. Texas is claiming land that uh, New Mexico is saying is theirs. They're angered as more and more Northerners are becoming abolitionists. And a lot of the Northern states are not doing anything to help with the runaway slaves. This right here is showing the dispute. <laughs> Texas is so funny. Texas claimed all this land right here as their own. Uh, this was one of the disputes in the Compromise of 1850. Eventually, Texas will give it up as you can see, but imagine how OP Texas would be if we actually had all this land right here. During this time, we have the Underground Railroad, which we've talked about before. It was an informal chain of anti-slavery homes, uh, stop places. They'd be aided by whites and blacks to escape all the way to Canada. They would get to the north. Sometimes they would stop there, there but often they would go to Canada because technically slaves could be captured in the north and brought back to the south, but they can't do that in Canada. 
the two major leaders of the Underground Railroad are Harriet Tubman, right here, and Jerry Lagoon. We talked about the Great Triumvirate before. By this time, the Great Triumvirate's getting pretty old. Henry Clay, Daniel Webster, John C. Calhoun, the Immortal Trio. Henry Clay is going to propose his third great compromise. He already did the uh, compromise, the Missouri Compromise in 1820. He already did the Compromise Tariff of 1833, and he's going to propose the Compromise of 1850. He said the North and South should compromise to avoid civil war. In what the North would do is they would offer a more strict fugitive slave law, and Northern people would help the South capture their slaves. In return, the South would let California become a state, so it's a series of compromises. Uh, there's a new young Democrat during this time who's becoming pretty famous. His name is Stephen Douglas. He's known as the Little Giant, and he's going to support Clay's compromise. John C. Calhoun is going to reject it. He says there's not enough safeguards for the South. He's tired of the South always compromising. He wants the North basically to give in. Webster will support it. Uh, even though Webster was a Massachusetts man, he was a nationalist. He said, we, he said Webster said, let's allow uh, the Mexican secession to vote on whether they want to have slavery or not. So let's allow Utah and New Mexico to uh, on whether they want to have slavery or not. They're going to vote no anyways because of their climate and because slavery would not work there. We were, uh, slavery would not be able to work in that kind of agricultural system. He said, disunion is worse than slavery. We need to make compromises to prevent a civil war in 1850. Here's Henry Clay's speech proposing the uh, Compromise of 1850. Even though Henry Clay made this proposal, it did not get acted upon right away. Not everybody liked it. There are some radicals in the northern side and the southern side that did not want to compromise. The radicals in the northern side were uh, led by William Seward. He's a young senator from New York. He's a Whig. Uh, he's actually a Free Soil member, excuse me. No, I was right. He was a Whig. And he spoke for the younger and northern radicals. Uh, he said there's a higher law, the law of God, and we can't uh, just make compromises if slavery it goes against the law of God. He was a strong anti-slavery. Uh, he was against the whole idea of compromise, at least at this time in his life. He said that we need to exclude slavery in the territories. It's a higher law than the Constitution. It's a moral cause. On the southern side, there's going to be pro-slavery extremists who favor secession. They want to form their own country. The North is never going to let us be. They were called fire eaters. What's going to happen is President Zachary Taylor is going to die. Vice President Millard Fillmore is going to become the new president. Uh, Taylor dies of uh, dysentery. Uh, he eats some spoiled fruit and dies of dysentery, which is a really painful way to go. And uh, the vice president was Millard Fillmore. He was a Whig also. He's going to sign a series of compromises, uh, and the Compromise of 1850 will happen. One of the things that happened was uh, Henry Clay tried to make all the compromises happen at once in one document. What's going to happen afterwards, in order to get it passed, they're going to have to vote on all the compromises individually. They'll be able to get enough support for each individual one that it'll go through that way. So in the Compromise of 1850... California is made a free state. Utah and New Mexico get to decide. They do get to do popular sovereignty to determine whether there's slavery or not. Texas has to give up uh, the land they were claiming. Washington, D.C. is going to get rid of the slave trade. And there's going to be a strict fugitive slave law. So if slaves escape to the north, northerners have to ship them back to the south. It's a federal law now. Let's see if I missed anything. California Free State, yep. Texas gives up uh, the land they were claiming, and they ha get $10 million. Yep. I'm brilliant. So in the election of 1852, the Democrats are going to uh, run uh, Franklin Pierce. Franklin Pierce was from the North, but he had Southern uh, sympathies. Even though he's from the North, he sympathized with the South. 
Northerners that sympathized with the South were called doe faces. He was a dark horse candidate, just like uh, James Polk was before. Um, the Whigs will nominate another general. The Whigs think they can only win with generals. They're going to nominate uh, Winfield Scott. The party is going to be split over slavery. The Whig party is basically going to implode in this election, and they're going to die. Uh, the anti-slavery rights will support Scott. Uh, so they nominate somebody that's against slavery, but then in the Whig platform, they support the fugitive slave law. So the whole party kind of implodes. Yeah. Pierce is going to defeat Scott pretty handily, 254 to 42 Electoral College. So let's talk about Franklin Pierce. Under Franklin Pierce, let's talk about some of his foreign policy. At this time in South America, there were some Southerners that were going to South America. And they were hoping to start rebellions to create slave republics, uh, that like Republican governments that had slavery in South America. South is interested in the extension of slavery. One of the big people that does this is William Walker in the Walker Expedition. He's going to install himself as president in Central America. He's going to legalize slavery. Eventually, he will be overthrown by a coalition of Central American nations. Walker went through Mexico and got in Central America. His goal was to create a large country within Central America that would be pro-slavery. But he will be overthrown, eventually killed. So it does not work out. Let's talk about some other foreign policy diversions under Pierce. Both America and Britain want to build a canal in Nicaragua. Uh, they want to build a canal, like we have one today, the Panama Canal, but they want to build a canal in Nicaragua, which will connect the Pacific and the Atlantic Ocean. What's going to happen in the clayton Bulwer Treaty in 1850? America and Britain will both promise that neither one of us will build a canal or fortify or secure, secure exclusive control over any future waterway. So we both agree that we don't want to fight over this, so neither one of us will build a canal. That's the Secretary of State right there, John Clayton. This was where the canal would have gone, right here. Eventually we will have a canal, but it's going to be right here. Also during this time, Commodore, which is a naval title, Matthew Perry is going to uh, sail to Japan. At this time, Japan was isolationist. They only allowed one Dutch ship to trade with them once a year. The Japanese were samurai. They didn't want to trade with the uh, Western countries. They were afraid their technology would destroy their whole social system and their honor system. They had swords, they had samurai swords. Uh, they didn't want to be corrupted by Western values and Western technology. Commodore Matthew Perry is going to come to Japan. They are still using like medieval technology. He's going to uh, basically demand that Japan opens up trade with America or he would start uh, attacking their uh, port, like uh, shooting it with the cannonballs and stuff. Japan really is left with no choice but to open up trade with America. After this, Japan is going to realize that unless we modernize, we're going to be taken over by... Uh, America or Western nations, similar to what's going on in other parts of the world, like in Africa and Asia, by the Europeans. So this is going to lead Japan to, to start modernizing in the Meiji Restoration. And they're going to start to become more modernized and industrialized. In 1854, under Pierce, they did a secret document where they offered $120 million to buy Cuba from Spain. Spain would refuse. In the Austin Manifesto, they said that if Spain refuses, they would take it by force. Eventually, some anti-slavery people got wind of it, and this scheme was dropped. This caused a whole amount of controversy also, because this was really, the Austin Manifesto was made by Southerners who wanted to spread slavery. Uh, so, like, this caused a lot more conflict. In 1854, uh, California and Oregon, had in, they were inaccessible by land or sea. They really needed a, re a railroad to connect the East Coast to the West Coast. So they're going to do the Gadsden Purchase, which is going to get them, uh, they're going to buy a little strip of land from Mexico uh, in 1853, which is going to allow for a transcontinental railroad to be built. And let me show you this right here. So before this time, uh, this is the Gadsden Purchase right here. Before this time, 
They already had some railroads built. It was hard to connect these areas together. But with this land right here, they are going to be able to uh, connect the railroad. Lastly, let's talk about the Kansas-Nebraska Act. Stephen Douglas is going to propose a compromise in 1854. By this time, Henry Clay, John C. Calhoun, and Daniel Webster are dead. Rip. Uh, it's going to carve the Kansas-Nebraska Territory into two territories, Nebraska and Kansas. They're going to do popular sovereignty in both of those. Kansas would vote slavery. That's what he assumed they would do. And Nebraska would vote uh, free. That way it'd still be equal. The hitch was the compromise. The hitch was the compromise of 1820, or the Missouri Compromise, which said there was no slavery north of 3630. So, in this compromise in the Kansas-Nebraska Act, they're going to repeal it. The Southerners will like this. The Northerners are going to be really upset because it goes against the Missouri Compromise, and they don't want slavery spreading into the territories. So, the idea of the Kansas-Nebraska Act, 3630, right here. So, this should not have any slavery is when they do popular sovereignty, the people will vote for slavery here and they'll vote for freedom. They'll vote for anti-slavery here. So the Kansas-Nebraska Act is gonna be passed in 1854. The Northerners are gonna be, be pretty furious with the Kansas-Nebraska Act. They're gonna to refuse to honor the fugitive slave law. The anti-slavery movement is gonna grow in the North and the North so the anti-slavery movement will grow in the North. The North is going to be unwilling to compromise. The Kansas-Nebraska Act was passed to uh, create compromise and unify the country, but it actually causes the country to become more divided. The South are going to be furious. They're going to be angry at free soilers who are trying to move to Kansas. The, un the understanding was Kansas would become a slave state. They would vote for slavery. But what's going to happen after the Kansas-Nebraska Act, a lot of Northerners are going to move to Kansas. So they could vote for anti-slavery. The Democratic Party is going to start to split over slavery, and this destroyed the Compromise of 1820, the Missouri Compromise, because it violates 3630, and it destroyed the uh, Compromise of 1850 because the North is no longer enforcing the Fugitive Slave Law. At this time, we are going to have a new party right here, the Republican Party. This is going to lead to the birth of the Republican Party. The Republican Party is going to be reformed formed in response to the Kansas-Nebraska Act. The Republican Party is made up of former Whigs, barn burner Democrats. Barn burner Democrats were anti-slavery Democrats, free soilers, know-nothing people, and other opponents of the Kansas-Nebraska Act. They're gonna become the nation's second uh, largest party. And the Republican platform is gonna say they wanna stop the spread of slavery into the territories. They don't say they directly wanna get rid of slavery anywhere, but they are going to be an anti-slavery party that wants to stop the spread of slavery in the territories. Uh, no slavery north of the Mason-Dixon line. All right, kiddos, and that is all I have for you for today. Until next time, d -d 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 deuces, 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 yeah.